of the Chris D'Elia podcast and I'm going to say Bill Burr's podcast. So Bill Burr had this interesting point that he made um, on his podcast that got me thinking and then about cancellation, right? People getting cancelled and stuff. And I've kind of covered a lot of the people getting cancelled on this podcast, on my other main show that I do where I do make little clips on YouTube. So definitely check that out. If you haven't seen him, I've done a few. I've done a recent one about Brendan Shaw firing Malik B from the Firing a Kid. But I speak a lot about stuff that's going on with LA comedians and their podcasts because I spend a lot of time listening to them. I'm fans of these guys. I went to LA in 2016. I went to the comedy, no, sorry, I went to the Laugh Factory. I went to the comedy store. I saw Tiffany had before she blew up like Hollywood blew up and she was just um hosting um in the comedy store which was flipping sick or was it Laugh Factory one of them I think it was Laugh Factory she was hosting and it was sick to then see her become this mega flipping Hollywood star it kind of really added weight to all the stories I've heard of people saying hey if you start being a door guy you could eventually lead to many bigger things so it's just great to see the whole thing so I'm a fan in general I'm a fan I'm a fan I'm a fan and obviously one of my favorite podcasts to listen to especially because it's a solo podcast is Bill Burr's right uh, Bill Burr's Monday Morning Podcast is one of my favourites and he had this interesting point that he said about cancellation that got me thinking and then there's another clip I'm going to play about um, Chris D'Elia where he also speaks about his cancellation and how that's affected him and I'll give my opinion on the fact that I don't really think you can get cancelled nowadays especially if you have fans you get cancelled from certain institutions and certain places but I don't think your career can be over completely if you have a fan base that's, but let's just hear what Bill Burr has to say about it first you know what's funny I was thinking about this whole fucking cancel culture thing you, you know what the reality is is nothing uh, you really can't cancel somebody like unless you get the cops involved and they actually get arrested and they go to jail you know, but as far as like this whole bullshit that you've been canceled, I've noticed with with comedians, at least, is they post shows and the shows still sell out. And then what happens is the people that said they were canceled when they realize that they're not canceled is they then bully and attack the promoter of the show to try to get the show canceled. Um, that's what really happens. So that is one of those things that I just kind of hope goes away when we, when, when, whenever we come back, that that goes away because that shit, it really just expanded beyond these abusive monsters that were, that were out there and needed to be dealt with. It just sort of then expanded into, I don't like your thought process. <laughs> Therefore, We've decided your career and your dream is over. It's just like, wait, what? What happened? When? When did? When did it expand into this? Talk to me about your politics. I don't like those. So obviously, Bill Burr is largely right in what he's saying. I'm not going to argue with a great man. But the only thing I'll push back on is I think the only issue with these comedians getting cancelled and stuff and why they maybe feel like they are is that for the most part, from what I've seen so far. A lot of the guys have been cancelled, maybe with the, but specifically the, the last two that I've featured in terms of Chris Delia and Brian Cannon, you got the impression that they were more concerned with making it in Hollywood than they were with being you know, successful and happy with their careers being just a stand-up. They wanted to have the, the, the Hollywood experience too, right? Do a bit of acting, hosting, guest appearing on shows, whatever it may be. And the fact that they got cancelled, it completely derailed and essentially removed any possibility of them ever working in the conventional Hollywood entertainment industry because for the most part, it's not because these people have morals or ethics, it's because they don't want to risk the project getting tanked because they invest a lot of money into it because of your allegations. So they usually distance themselves from you. So maybe some of the producers and directors of the show don't actually believe that you're this person that the media is portraying you out to be or these allegations portray you to be. But because it's a project that they sunk a lot of money into, it's got a lot of investment, their career is on the line, they just can't risk having you associated with it because this might also affect the ability for those things to work. And, you know, if you know and you think about movies and TV shows, like they're not, it's not the most easy thing to, you know, work on a show, develop it, make it and put it out there and it'd be successful. Right? It's just one of those things that sometimes luck, whatever, maybe timing, but it's not really easy. So if you want to give yourself the best, po best possible opportunity to succeed, the last thing you're going to do is get someone involved who's been quote unquote publicly cancelled. So that's why they tend to do it. And on the, comedian side of things they usually feel cancelled because they've tried to be a Hollywood star and now that's been taken away from them 
going back straight to going back only to stand up probably feels like a demotion it probably feels like a um uh a crappy resolution to a situation that they <coughs> worked very hard to get themselves into which i can understand right if you're <coughs> an entertainer sorry it's you know making it to be a professional comedian or an entertainment figure in any way shape or form is really difficult there's no real straight line to the top it's very very hard to make it in the arts at all especially in stuff like stand-up right where literally you know anyone can stand up in front of a mic and do it it's like you know there's probably a uh, um there's probably an overabundance of people trying that thing same similar say maybe to djing so in order for you to break through and finally make it it really requires a lot of perseverance with that, with that good stuff so if, when you do end up getting there and they pull the rug underneath your, your feet. It, it is completely unfair, especially when the allegations are, you know, not true or the allegations alone. And also, I'm of the thinking, you know, if you've been alleged to do something, why can't we just publicly shame you and tell you you have a timeout instead of taking away your entire career? Why can't that be a thing also? And also, why can't your fans decide if you keep a career or not? Why is it that the industry decides to close the door when they have far worse closets, 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 far worse skeletons in their own closet, right? It just doesn't make any sense in that regard. And then I think, what was the end point that he made there? Da, 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 da. Oh, you're going away. I don't think it's going to go anywhere anytime soon. Um, only because I think people have now seen the power that they have with, you know, putting them together a little bit, a few clips about, you know, yeah, it's not going to go away because people now see that they have power, right? They know that if they put together a compilation of some of your worst tweets, you know, take something you said out of context from a podcast, they know that they, they can really affect your life negatively. So then, you know, that, come, that comes with power. That gives you a sense of... Uh, purpose or whatever it may be right it gives you whatever it may be it, it does something to people's psyche so uh, the attention the clout whatever it may be so it's unlikely it's going to change overnight it's going to require us maybe societally saying hey that isn't cool anymore we don't really like this sort of stuff we don't like being judged people being judged in the court of public opinion we're now going to give people due process or whatever it may be or give people you know industry timeouts whatever because they're losing great artists i don't know it's going to require a societal thing it's not going to require it's not going to just happen overnight it's not going to be one person deciding i'm not going to tweet this it's going to require everyone in society saying nah we don't stand for this anymore going forward and then off the back of that chris D'Elia said something which then rang true to what i'm thinking in terms of these people mostly just being upset that they can't um be uh Hollywood stars that they kind of dreamed that they were going to be. This is Crystal Lee on one of his recent podcasts, basically speaking about how he got cancelled and how that's a brief comment about how it kind of negatively affected what he's doing at the moment. I'll play that for you now. Waving in neighbors. What happened? Slept nine hours. Oh, you don't have a job? No. <laughs> no, I'm not for a while now. I'm cancelled. Um,. <laughs> Waving a neighbor. What happened? Slept nine hours. Oh, you oh, don't have a do job? Small screen. No. No, I'm not for a while now. I'm canceled. Um. Yeah, awkward, isn't it, right? Waving a neighbor. But also very accurate in terms of probably how he's feeling. Because he was on the cusp of stardom, stardom, right? I think he spoke quite a lot on his podcast about his desire to be an action movie star, how he loved Tom Cruise. He was a fan of Keanu Reeves, right? He really wanted to be that guy and effectively got pulled away from him due to, again, allegations and maybe some of it's true, some of it's false. Who knows? But I think part of the reason why we haven't seen Crystal Lee do stand up um, and sell out a show because he easily could. I'm, I'm saying this now categorically. If he put out a tour, it'll do pretty well. If he decides to do a comeback show somewhere, it'll do pretty well. Like he's still probably well regarded within the LA circle in terms of comedians because they saw him actually kill on stage. Regardless of what he might have not got up to outside of it, they know you know that he has the power. He has the uh, ability to move a crowd in a really in a way that not a lot of people can do. Um, he sold a bunch of tickets, which I'm sure probably didn't it really uh, sit well with a few people who thought they were better than him comedically but for sure if he decided to announce a tour tomorrow he would sell that out in an instant but I think part of the reason why we haven't seen him on stage is because either he feels embarrassed or ashamed of what happened and he doesn't want to expose himself right putting himself on stage is like the ultimate 
um, level of exposure. There's this thing that someone said, I forgot who said it, but uh, supposedly the reason why we have an innate fear for talking in public is because, you know, back in our, our ancestors basically um, used to have to address a public crowd in on trial. Like if you were accused of something like a crime and you wanted to uh, fight your case, you were basically required to stand in front of the village or the town wherever you were from or the plantation whatever right and basically fight your case right um so like d d defend yourself that way in front of an audience and obviously it was a nerve-wracking experience and that kind of you know was a precursor to maybe you you know being executed being ostracized from your group um so that kind of has passed down to us from our ancestors which basically leads us to always have a bit of a um a be a bit apprehensive when we have to get in front of stage so you can understand somebody is, was accused of what he's accused of feeling a little bit like you know what i don't want to expose myself right now because you know as soon as he gets on stage the op-eds and the flipping articles will restart again the campaigns to get clubs to cancel his dates will just go keep going he's kind of kind of he's kind of been able to keep his head under the water um and sort of like you know carry on doing his thing without much attention being drawn to him so that could be one or it could be the fact that he sees it now as a crappy sort of a backup plan not backup plan but you know it, it, from from wanting to be a big hollywood star to now only only doing stand-up quote-unquote like i still think it's a bloody one of the best jobs in the world to have you know stand on the stage and tell flipping dick jokes but to go from being the netflix guy to maybe having a big hollywood movie with what is it called that's that the done the thing where i don't know what it's called that crappy movie that they've got with the wrestlers and stuff in it to then just doing stand-up i can see why he's a bit apprehensive i can see why again i don't agree with it personally i think he should still do it and if he's got the ability to make money that way then why not but i can definitely understand why he do that so like i said i don't think i don't think people can get cancelled and if they got fans right you can still perform in front of your crowd and your fan base but i think for the most part if you were hoping that you would make it in the industry and you know you're working your way through networking schmoozing with the right people appearing on the right things saying the right things on shows and then suddenly that gets taken away from you i can understand why doing only stand-up could seem a bit you know a bit crappy and you would prefer just to kind of like sit on the sidelines but in terms of cancer people take away the entire crypt they don't have fans cool because that's usually industry people i think if you're in the industry you should be nervous about getting canceled because you know you don't really have fans because you just you just basically act and say people's lines and you just you know what i mean there's nothing people can really back you with as an individual but if you have your own podcast you have your own audience you do videos you write blogs whatever it may be you record dj mixes you'll be fine you'll be perfectly fine um, but you just have to weather the storm, you know, the social media outrage storm, but you should be okay.